Welcome back, y'all. Welcome back, y'all. Welcome, biggity, 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 back, y'all. Hey, you guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello. My name is Kelsey, and I'm here for you guys every Sunday and Wednesday, sometimes more, sometimes less, to talk about my BSG journey. I hope that through these videos you're able to find the answers to questions you've been looking for or the path to choosing surgical weight loss it's made that much easier i hope you guys are having a wonderful day so far excuse the mini mouse aesthetic that i am giving off here listen this natural hair journey has been a struggle not natural hair but no weave journey has been a struggle anyways neither here nor there not what this video is about today is what up oh, up oh, i hear you way in wednesday ba, 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 da, ba, da. the day when we get together i step on the scale to see if anything has changed from the last week or the last time we got together and i'm gonna go ahead and put my stats here um I started off at 330 pounds. My goal weight is 170 pounds. And my current weight is 251.8 pounds. Y'all, I can't remember. I have to look at my video before I record my video because I can't remember. In my mind, I just say 251 pounds, but I try to include the ounces for you guys. Neither here nor there. We're going to move right along. Um, as you guys can see, the scale moved a little bit, not as drastically as it has been in previous months. Um, I think for this month, I've only lost about seven pounds. Um, on average, I am pulling out or losing about 11 pounds a month. I'm down a little bit, but that's okay. I'm cool with it. Everything takes time and I got to give myself some grace. Speaking of giving myself some grace, in this video, we're going to be talking about six things I've learned in six months post-op BSG. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not really six months. In about five days, I'll be six months out post-op BSG. But by the time we meet again, I'll be at that point. So I figured why not go ahead and give this video. I feel like, you know, I'm not an expert. I haven't been through everything. I'm not a connoisseur in the VSG life. But I think that there's things that I've learned and I've picked up along the way that I feel like I can share with you guys that, you know, I may need to rehash in this video because I have some people that are just joining me, that are just joining my family. So I'm sure you guys are going to hear some things I've said before in this video. But listen, these are crucial key things that I've picked up that I've kind of held close and that I've really honed in with these through these six months post-op VSG. So we're gonna go ahead and get into the first lesson I've learned. And that one is cravings are here to stay. I've mentioned this before, I've talked about this before. Look, cravings don't go anywhere. They don't diminish, they don't dissolve, they don't disappear into the universe. They're there to stay. And my favorite thing to say is if you were eating bad for 20 years and then you have your surgery, that's not going to change overnight. The ability to withhold and withstand those cravings, that comes with time, willpower, and also giving yourself grace. My cravings haven't gone away, but they have improved over time. I don't find myself craving bad things as often as I did before the surgery. I've been able to turn down food that I shouldn't be eating more often than not. But let's be real about it. I'm a food addict. I used food to help me cope with things and to hide things and to deal with things that I didn't want to think about or feel or go through emotionally. And once I had my surgery and I didn't have that ability or that outlet anymore, I didn't know what to do with myself. With the help of their therapy and giving myself a little bit more grace, I've been able to work through a lot of the symptoms and the issues surrounding my trauma and my food addiction. When people tell you that the cravings go away, don't believe them. And if you're coming into this surgery thinking that it's gonna get better and they're gonna go away, they will get better. They're not gonna go away. Don't come into the surgery thinking, this is the only reason I need to have this surgery. This is why I'm having the surgery. Don't do it. Don't have the surgery if you feel like your cravings are gonna be gone because you're gonna be disappointed and you're gonna fail. I like to give you guys realistic, 
and honest answers. Your cravings don't go away, but they do get better. That's the first lesson I've learned. Lesson number two, protein is king. I found this out the hard way. It's been one of the hardest lessons I've had to learn, um, mainly because I felt in the beginning that I didn't really need protein. I would've been able to eat all of my protein um, per se, um, or that protein wasn't as important as it was being made. We need protein to survive. It gives us energy. It keeps our body healthy and happy. And I failed to realize that. I've learned throughout this journey that instead of reaching for a energy drink or for coffee, I can actually get a little bit of protein shake and it gives me that energy boost that I'm needing or that I'm craving. In the beginning of my journey, I struggled with my protein intake. And unfortunately, what happened with me was I suffered a major hair loss in the fourth to fifth month of my post-op journey. And I realized then at that moment that I needed to prioritize protein and make it my priority for the rest of my entire life. Now, my meals and my life are based around protein. Protein is put first in every meal. I typically plan just to eat protein in most of my meals. I don't even include a side or think about a side until I'm able to get my protein taken care of. If you take nothing from this video, if you don't remember anything from this video, please remember how important protein is to your success and to your body's health after bariatric surgery. Lesson number three, I had to learn that God's timing is perfect. There were so many times in my life where I tried to force things, friendships, jobs, money, um, just acquaintanceships, relationships, anything that I felt like I could make go my way, I attempted to try and make it go my way. But since I've had the surgery, it's <laughs> helped to kind of humble your girl and put into perspective that it's not my place to determine how things work out and that the only timing that I should be following or waiting on is God's. I wanted this surgery so bad. And so the first hiccup that I ran into with me having my first surgery day and then it was moved, I was a wreck. I didn't show it in my video. I was mentally going crazy because I was I just knew that on January whatever whatever I was gonna have my surgery it was gonna be great it was done and over with and I was like oh okay they changed my surgery day and I lost it y'all it just it just didn't sit well with me and then I talked to my dad and I remember my dad saying Kelsey everything happens in perfect time everything happens when God wants it to happen you never know there could be a reason why you're not having the surgery when you were first scheduled to you have to think about that. You have to take that into account. And it helped me to understand and to realize that God's timing is perfect. Even if it seems inconvenient to me, even if it seems, you know, like things are just going wrong to me, God's timing is perfect. And it's my duty to respect that and to understand that. Now, don't get me wrong. After my surgery, I still do what I need to do. I go after what I want. I get out there, I hump and I make it happen. But if something were to go differently than planned or change at the last moment or just not be the way that I feel that it should be, I sit back, take a breath, and I say, God, I trust you. I'm not sure, you know, to anyone who's watching this, if you believe in God or what your, you know, your religious beliefs or your following is. The whole message behind this is everything happens at a perfect time. It doesn't matter if you believe in God or whatever higher power. We all have a plan for our life. We all have, you know, a certain way that has been written for us. And we, you know, we don't control anything. And I think it's important that we understand that things happen for a reason. And to any of you guys who are, you know, I get so many emails about insurance denials and schedules, you know, being changed and insurance making them do something over again. And I say this to say, put your faith in whatever power you believe in and just know that when it's your time it's your time it's gonna happen trust me number four lesson number four mental health matters mental health just isn't some word that floats around in the air and you know just pops in and out of our lives mental health our mental health is so very important especially after bariatric surgery you go through so many changes physically emotionally relationship wise Everything is beginning to change and nothing is the same. The person that I was six months ago, I'm not even the same person now. I feel like I learned something about myself new every day. There's something about me that I didn't know about me 
six months before at 33 years old that I learned. And for me, that's mentally like just, and there's just so much that you go through. I am living proof that bariatric patients need therapy after surgery. I, I was one of the, I'm sure many, who did not have to have a psychological evaluation or any type of therapy prior to surgery. I really wish I would have taken that time or suggested or said, hey, I really think I need to have you know some sort of therapy before my surgery. I don't know how this is gonna affect me. It's important that I do it. But in that moment, in that space, my mom was telling me, Kelsey, you're fine. Because at that time, Kelsey still had food. And so once that was gone and I was just there with me and my weight loss and the, and the whatever, and there's no food to fix it, Kelsey's like, okay, so what do we do now? What do we do with all this trauma you got, you know, lugging behind you in this big old suitcase? What do we do now? Okay, we're going to start unloading that. We're going to start looking at that. Okay, you remember this from 20 years ago? Okay, well, here it is now. Look at it now. You know, you packed it up and you haven't touched it because you dealt with food and other ways to hide your emotions. Well, okay, well, you don't have that. And we're bored. So we're going to pop back up and we're going to drive you crazy. I really just wonder, had I have taken, you know, the initiative or had the thought process to say, hey, I really think I need, you know, some sort of therapy pre-op. Um, I wonder if, and this is before, I guess, even before I considered surgery, I wonder if I had a considered therapy prior to surgery and prior to even thinking about surgery, would my food addiction have progressed the way it did? Had I have dealt with the trauma and the issues that I have, would I have became morbidly obese? You know, that's something to think about. Ever since the surgery, my emotions and my mindset has just been all over the place. And getting help was the best thing that I could have done for myself. I am so thankful. I feel like I'm a mime. I feel like it was the best thing I've ever done for myself. I'm so thankful that I listened to some suggestions from you guys and actually sought out a professional to help me through what I was going through. I have made sure to look after my mental health every day. I journal, I exercise, I do things that cater to me mentally and physically that do not involve food. If you don't take anything from this lesson, no. Your mental health is very, very, very important and should be one of the highest priorities after your surgery. Lesson number five, and this one doesn't necessarily affect me, but because of my position and where I am now with YouTube, I have learned that getting bariatric, bleh, bariatric surgery is hard for everybody. There's some people that can't get it at all. Insurance won't approve it. Um, they don't have insurance. They don't have the luxury of, you know, go getting through it as easy as I did. And I sit down and I read and I talk to you guys and I listen to your stories and I feel your pain. And I had no idea how many people want this surgery and cannot get it, are not approved. Um, they weigh too little or they weigh too much. They haven't lost enough weight. They're not doing this. They're not doing that. Insurance says no, but they say yes. The doctor says yes. The insurance says yes. But then your body, something happens with your body. I had no idea that it was so hard for some people to obtain what I obtained so easily. And it definitely is humbling and it makes me realize that I am so blessed. And to anybody out there that easily obtained the surgery and or had the money to go to Mexico or whatever your situation is, just know there are people out there who want and need the same surgery that we have been able to obtain and cannot. And I wish I had money that I just had, I wish I just had a bucket full of money that I could just give whoever, you know, to pay for their surgery, to help them out. I wish I could go to every insurance company and be like, hey, you let them have their surgery. So, you know, I may not always respond, but I'm always, always taking into account, you know, what you guys are going through. And there's sometimes I can't respond because I don't know what to say. I don't know what to tell you to, to do. I'm not an insurance or a surgery specialist. I have no idea. Luckily, I had a good enough team behind me that were able to get me approved with no problem. Um, and, I, and like I said, this has been a lesson for me that is new to me. 
bariatric surgery is hard for those to obtain, for some people to obtain. The last and final lesson that I've learned along my six month journey, number six, stalls happen. And listen, they're rough. I am so disappointed, you know, with my weight loss this month. And the, and I've said this before, the mental aspect of this surgery is so much harder than the weight loss and or the exercise or whatever even the lifestyle because in your mind you can't help but feel that you've done something wrong or you've eaten something wrong or you're just to blame for everything that's going wrong in your body and instead of me having faith and giving myself grace i'm so hard on myself i blame myself you know, there's even been times where I've tried to restrict my calories or lower the amount of food that I've eaten or I'm eating for that day to ensure that I lose weight. Editing Kelsey here. Look at this. It's in the dark. This is the worst angle ever. But anyways, um, look, I, I had to come on and give a disclaimer. Don't do what I do or what I have done. Um, I am working actively with the therapist to address my mental health concerns as well as my behaviors in reaction and response to not losing weight. Do not do what I do, please. Be mindful of your health and your happiness and be responsible. I don't put this out here to encourage you guys to do anything that I'm doing. I put this out here as knowledge and as me sharing my experiences. I am not a health professional. I am in this journey with each of, each of you. And unfortunately, I have really messed up a really skewed vision of self-punishment when I don't lose the weight that I feel that I should have lost. Um, and that's another story for another day. But I came on here to say, trust your body. Do not follow in my steps. Um, just be responsible and everything will work out. Just wanted to come and say that. Okay, bye. And I was talking to my therapist about that. And, you know, we're addressing that as well. You know, stalls happen, you guys. It's gonna happen. Your body is changing. Your body is evolving. And you know, you just went through a really, really, really major trauma with your surgery. And I I have to believe that my body is saying, hey, I'm catching up. I'll be there in a minute. But for right now, slow down. You know, I'm still, you know, and you have faith. And, you know, I'm talking to myself. I'm not only talking to you guys. I'm talking to me. Have faith in your tool. Have faith that you're doing everything that you're supposed to be doing to lose the weight and to get healthy. They're going to happen. And they're going to happen continuously throughout our weight loss process. So I have to keep in mind and I have to understand that even though it may not be ideal, they're going to happen. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Those are six lessons that I've learned throughout my journey, and I'm sure that I'm going to learn a ton more. I learn things from you guys every day. I learn things from research every day. I learn things from myself every day. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful week. Um, I may be back tomorrow for a um, Tasty Thursday video, but I have some really exciting things coming up with my partner, Berry Melt. I can't wait um, to get that out to you guys. So if you are not and you would like to be, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Become a member of my family. Come on in for the hug, baby. Mm. Mm. Um, I love you guys and I'm so happy that you're here with me. You could have been anywhere else in the YouTube universe, but you chose to be here with me. I love you guys in 10K. And if you haven't already, please make sure to join my Facebook group and you can find it at uh, One Bite at a Time on Facebook. And I also have my link tree in the description box below. Click it and it'll have all of my social media platforms as well as the... Um, 
healthy hair bundle that you guys are able to get a discount on with berry melts um and also any product with berry melts um an individual product not auto renew you can use the code kelsey 20 to receive 20 percent off of your order um i love you guys so so much i'm gonna put in my weigh-in clip now hey y'all and good morning we're gonna get ready for our weigh-in wednesday excuse my morning uh tone <laughs> Bring y'all closer to the scale. Wake the scale up. Two fifty one point eight. All right, I'm gonna get out of here, you guys. I got my air fried chicken in the oven right now. My family's waiting on me. It's nine o'clock. Okay, goodbye.